Hello everyone, welcome back to our videos and today we're gonna be dedicating this one to this outdoor long range access point from Wavlink, the Aerial HD9, an AEX 3000 access point. It features Wi-Fi 4, Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6 in the 2.4 and 5 GHz bands. A very interesting and powerful device as you're about to see. Full disclosure here, we received this unit from the brand for our tests and of course for our unbiased opinion so we could share it here with you, the authentic experience with this unit as it is usual. This is a type of access point that we had been asked about a lot in the past, not this particular unit, but we had been asked about access points that first were reliable, that could be placed outdoors with no problem at all, and the most important thing, that had an outstanding working range for you to optimize deployments for higher coverage of their signal. That is something quite difficult in some areas. All this particularly useful in hotels, beaches, recreational areas, campuses, schools, and of course, events of any kind. The unit is as massive as you can see right here. It has a very nice design and materials seem to be very high quality. You will get in the box along with the access point, the accessories and the antennas. The unit, as you'll see in a moment, can be wall mounted very easily with the four screws included and pole mounted as we'll see in a moment. Antennas, as you can see, are proportional in size for this unit. In this box, you'll also find the very convenient stainless steel zip ties for pole mounting with these anti-slip pads. Accessories include the power over ethernet adapter and injector, in case that you decide not to use a power over ethernet switch, for which power over ethernet 802.3AF, commonly known just as PoE, is needed. You'll also get the waterproof connector assembly with its tightening wrench, and wall mounting anchors and screws. Basically everything that you need should you choose to install it on a wall or pole, which is the one that we opted for for our tests for omnidirectional optimization. Very quickly we put ourselves to work and configuration was very easy. The first access to the access point we could only gain from its graphical user's interface connecting to the Wi-Fi of the access point. Not so simple for beginners. It does not feature any controller yet, even though it is suggested such hardware unit in the quick start guide included, which is very easy to manage by the way and configure, and it may take just a couple of minutes for you to have it up and configured with a new network or repeating your existing network. If you're gonna use it as a repeater, it doesn't matter the hardware that you already have running with the other access points. As it is usual for big deployments in which you need to involve roaming from one to another access point, we strongly suggest having the same brand for the same sector in your physical infrastructure. Important to note here is that this access point includes a different set of antennas for the 2.4 and the 5 GHz band. So make sure that you place them in the correct connector and tighten them firmly to guarantee the hermetic seal not only of the gaskets in the antennas, but similar mechanism is present for wiring the ethernet cable at the bottom, so make sure that you assemble it correctly, as if you don't, wind gusts may affect the unit as it would be the only vulnerability for its IP rating. As it is rated IP67, for obvious reasons you can place this unit basically under any severe weather condition, rain, dust, wind, sand, you name it. For this same reason of being designed to work outdoors, manufacturer claims that it is equipped with a 15 kV ESD protection and a 5 kV lightning protection. In my particular personal experience, there is not much you can do with a direct lightning strike. But these are important facts that minimize impact in the rest of the equipment when you're hit by lightning. Additional countermeasures are up to you and are recommended. There are many ways in which you can decide how to install it and accessories for any situation are included. Against a wall or attached to a pole, omnidirectional signals of course will benefit from being installed on poles and against the wall only if clients are gonna be in front of that wall or very close than max range behind it. We were able to test that even after install it on a wall, you could access its network and navigate many meters outside the building, which at first we found impressive. Things were about to get better. We decided to pole mount it. Performance was outstanding at 50, 80, and even 100 meters, about 328 feet. Very decent speed, and keep in mind that this means that you have a huge coverage outdoors of 31,000 square meters, or about 330,000 square feet. Imagine this covering beach and pool areas. Fantastic. We then took our network clients 200 meters out. This was the speed that I got from my server. 
Right here, we were having a coverage of more than 125,000 square meters or 1.3 million square feet. Let's say that this is distance, quality of the signal of course degrades. But I did this from my S24 Ultra and an iPhone 14 Pro Max, mobile phones that may be the most troublesome clients that you may have for these type of networks. Networking speed at this distance was not the best, but was very normal for navigating and video calls. I actually finished my tests at about 300 meters to see how it would behave at this great distance. I couldn't have a direct line of sight to the access point, which is ideal for this long range situation. This is at almost a thousand feet from the access point, 3 million square feet or 300,000 square meters. Incredible. It did connect, but my phone was not strong enough to communicate to the access point. A PC with an external antenna or even my laptop could have connected. I could use, for example, another adapter with external antennas if I really needed a good signal here. All this that we had just experienced was expected, and let's remember that Wi-Fi coverage is governed by physics. The inverse square law could not have had a better way of showing how signal strength degrades over distance. That's why powerful access points as this one may suggest that there may be many ways of compensating for that, like its big antennas. At this point, I could only imagine what range we could have gotten out of these access points if we had created a mesh network. That would be for huge coverage. You'd just have to place the repeater at a place where signal quality is still good and you will have a strong deployment for very vast areas where the limit is not the coverage anymore, but the number of clients admitted by the device itself. For this device, that limit is 256 clients. The best performance of any access point comes when you directly connect it to the network, using of course the proper cable, and if you want, providing it with power over ethernet, or even using the power over ethernet injector. That will not change at all the performance of the access point. Also about this, signal drop. And something very interesting to consider when deploying outdoor equipment is that the access point transmits, but so does the client. The client or laptop usually must do so at its highest power. But we all know that due to the fact that they are equipment that is going to be used by humans so close to you, they have to comply with certain limits. In other words, the access point transmits loud and clear, but your laptop, mobile device or PC transmits, well, just clear. To compensate for that, long range access points as this one are equipped with antennas that most of the times are internal, and in this case, these big external antennas. Remember, they are omnidirectional, two for the 2.4 GHz band and the other two for the 5 GHz band. You can see then how those antennas are important for the access point to be able to listen to the most distant clients. As you can see in this diagram, this is actually one of the reasons why many clients cannot connect to outdoor Wi-Fi deployments as those access points are not designed to listen to the most distant clients. As of power consumption, which is also very important, is something that you have to consider if you're gonna install the unit acting as a repeater say for example in the middle of an event where no wired network access is available and neither is electricity. So you may need a solar power device and you may have to size up the batteries needed for that. If you had, for example, in fact electricity at that point where the access point will be repeating the signal, you will only need the cabling for the access point for power supplying purposes. Again, this is the power consumption of the unit, about 6 watts, which is very good considering that we have seen others consume a lot of power even on standby. Stability as a repeater was very good, signal and speeds were according to what you may need, actually they depend on the primary access point. We were actually surprised having tested this unit and we know that many of our followers are gonna be glad to watch this video as we had been asked about these type of solutions repeatedly. Finally, and not less important, beware of the cable that you use as it is gigabit ethernet, a CAD 5e cable will suffice. However, and this is something that we state every time we test networking equipment, stay away from CCA cabling. Use good quality certified copper wiring, even if it is a CAT 5E cabling that, by the way, is still being used all over the world. It worked very well with this Belden CAT 5E cable at the most distant 100 meters using the included adapter. Okay guys, that was all for today. As you may have proven, we take our tests very seriously so we can bring to you what is really like to experience the products that we test. And as we keep saying, what you can experience right out of the box. Your kind support to our channel, subscribing and hitting the like button. See you next time.